Sequels for state championships are rare. Today, though, we'll be treated to a basketball version of the Empire Strikes Back. The 2024 NCHSAA Basketball State Championships presented by West Shore Home. The dynasty from Farmville, a six straight title game appearance, and the school looking to complete an athletic championship mission, the Reedsville Rams. It's a 2A title rematch, defending champion Farmville Central and Reedsville. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Lawrence Dill Coliseum on the campus of Wake Forest. Patrick Keenis, Jay Stonehalter, and Jay, sure as the calendar turns to the middle of March is when Farmville Central makes an appearance, sixth straight title game appearance for them, but it's a rematch. Tough win last year over Reedsville. They made again as the top seeds. We figure we're gonna be here this March. I've been waiting since last <laughs> year for this rematch. They played earlier on during a Christmas tournament, but each side has had special seasons. Farmville Central, same up-tempo pace, and for Reedsville, those freshmen in last year's state title game, now they're sophomores, and they've grown so much from last year. All right, well, let's take a look at what we are going to see here. As far as the key players, so much talent on both sides. Which guys catch your eye? Well, depth on each team, and for Farmville Central, Tyler Whitehurst comes in about 15 points per game. Shot over 40% from beyond the three-point line in the regional final. It's going to be important for him to hit that outside shot so he can create driving lanes for himself and his teammates. And over on the other side for Reedsville, Kendra Harrison, 19 points, 19 rebounds in Wednesday's victory over Salisbury. One of the top sophomore basketball players in the country, top 25, and in football, he's the number one tight end sophomore as well dual sport athlete he can control the paint area and his physical toughness is something that stands out on the basketball court right, those are your west shore home players to watch bath remodeling made easy well now let's get to the keys for this one our ingles food for thought low prices love the savings well the jags defense can be overwhelming at times and they need it today to create turnovers and then they've got to be physical on the glass limiting Harrison on the boards over on the other side for Reedsville. They want to get paint touches, play inside out, and then they have to get back and transition defense to limit the fast break opportunities for Farmville Central. Farmville Central has won four of the last five 2A titles. Reedsville trying to claim its first in over two decades. They meet again for the 2A title here at Wake Forest. Farmville Central and Reedsville tip off is next. Jason Halter has been awaiting a year for this rematch as they have. Farmville Central fans coming out in droves, as are the fans of the Reedsville Rams. Unbeaten, the Rams are 28-0. Farmville Central 30-1. Who was their one loss to? Reedsville, as a matter of fact. In late December, a 10-point win for the Rams. Jason Ross on the right suffered the loss by 12 points to Larry Williford's Farmville Central Jaguars last year. Lock in. This is going to be a blast because we're not treated to these rematches very often. And the intensity of this ball game is something that it's going to be unlike anything we've seen between these two teams with what's on the line there past history. This is going to be an outstanding matchup. All right, so studying the table for Farmville Central. Larry Williford in his 19th year. Farmville Central has eight state championships, but in recent history, 2019, 2020, 2021. Lost in the finals in 2022. Won it last year over Reedsville. So four of the last five times they played for a state championship in the last half decade, they won. Reedsville, meanwhile, last title was back in 2003, but very close last year. As Jason Ross winds down his fifth year on the bench. This team was actually under 500 a couple of years ago. But he got in the state title game, got beat last year, undefeated. Out of the Mid-State Conference overall, 28 and 0. And they are loaded with athletic talent. And Kendra Harrison, the top tight end in the country in his sophomore class. He'll jump center with Hampton Evans. And the rematch is underway. Farville Central, the black uniform, trimmed to go. The Rams in the home white. Each of these teams, the top seed out of the East and the West. And the first attempt is a long range bomb. Dropped in by Reedsville. That's Deontay Neal. Deontay Neal, Kendra's cousin, has NBA range. Nice take there on the opening possession. 
J.D. Daniels running the point for the Jags. Whitehurst averaging 15 a game. Williams at 16 per. Hampton Evans about 14 a contest. A lot of great balance here for the Jaguars. Some contact delivered to the foul line. And that jumper a little bit short, but followed by Moye. The second crack won't go. Rebound quickly snapped ahead to the Rams. And here is Johnny is sharp. And it's a 5-0 lead. And now an immediate turnover by the defending champs. Rattle early. And here's our CL, CR legal fast break. We're about a minute into the game. Commitment results, CR legal team. There you have it. Five love, Reedsville. And the jacket has already come off of Larry Williford on the <laughs> sideline for Farmville Central. And there's a look at the starting line. It was brought to you by NC Medicaid. And a turnover, and here's the takeaway by Farmville Central. Trying to get on the board, not that time. And Harrison, a high for the rebound. All five starters for Reedsville were part of the state championship football team this December. Look at that nifty extra pass. Lee left all open, unfavorable rim. And the rebound of the Jags have an odd man opportunity here. Two on one with the left hand switching. Williams leaves it short and the stick back is in. The Jags on the board. Already two offensive boards for Farmville Central. Just that relentless style of crashing the glass is paying off. Neal averaging about 19 per. He's number one in the white uniforms for Reedsville. Ball in his hands in the corner. Man to man opening by Farmville Central. Step back, fake three. Harrison from distance. Yes, it's a long two for Harrison. And now the starting lineup for Farmville Central. NC Medicaid for more people. Life of benefits, Medicaid.nc.gov. All five starters for the Jags play excellent defense. Very balanced on the offensive end. Boy, it attacks, banks at home. Boy, yeah, just a bully down in the paint. Creating separation, lowering his shoulder. Reedsville by three. Boy, look how big Harrison is on the floor. I thought he was big with the pads on. Off the bounce, deep wing, falling down. Sharp knocks down the three. He wanted more. First Meg Brown, Hall of Ferguson's three of the game. Stop by Meg Brown right now, take advantage of their anniversary sale. Distance jumper missed. And Reedsville, a good early flow for the Rams. Sharp, the take, draws attention. Feeds Jones. Back to Sharp, one dribble, fires away, way long. Rebound to Williams. Snaps it ahead. Hampton Evans walked with it. Not the smoothest beginning for Farmville Central and Larry Williford. But not a lot is unknown as far as these programs. Played in the state title game last year. Played again in late December. I mean, they know the talent. They know what quickness looks like. They know who the shooters are. I mean, and it's about as well yeah. as you can know a non-conference team across the state. Uh, very familiar with each other's talents and also ways to attack each other. The misses a little bit short off glass. Battle for the rebound. Harrison just whipped it right off of the body of J.D. Daniels. Be interesting to watch how the Jags defend Harrison down in the post if they bring over double teams and how they attack if they switch to his own defense. Their style is man to man, and Hampton Evans lined up against Harrison <laughs> I was right just now. Say, it's an unenviable matchup for Hampton Evans as long as they're in man to man, if that's going to continue to be the matchup. Rams basketball. Sharp. Will I hand it to Neal? Almost midway through an interesting opening quarter. Neal backs up as the mismatch now on Evans, crosses him over, attacks hard, nowhere really to go, and he throws it away. Steal by Daniels. Here come the Jags. Daniels, nobody stops him. And he does get a late whistle as a bailout. And that foul will go against Kendra Harrison. So the 2A title rematch is underway. And Reedsville looking to unseat the defending champs. Rams up six early.
So we're on our way with the 2A Men's Basketball State Championship, Farmville Central and the Reedsville Rams. 10-4 early start for Reedsville. Farmville Central in the regional final, Jay. You, know, you saw them up close. Got off to a bit of a sluggish start in that game as well, right? <laughs> it didn't matter, though. They, they were down 10-zip in the first couple minutes of the game. By halftime, they're up by 19. The second quarter, 25-4. <laughs> I'd say that was domination. One more free throw here for J.D. Daniels from the Carolina Hurricanes free throw line. Go to hurricanes.com slash tickets. Be part of the action. Let's go Canes. Two free throws missed. Still a six-point lead for the Rams. Defense extended a bit, and now there is a switch no longer with Evans against Harrison. Three-pointer is missed. Rebound of the Jags. Snaps it quickly ahead. Here's Moye weaving through traffic, finding a lane in the hole and score. And they waste no time getting the ball up the court. And now we get a foul and a long down court pass. J.D. Daniels, the guilty party. Reedsville doing the same, getting the ball out of the net. Go on the run themselves. And here, a little bit of contact, the stoppage. Reedsville plays it around the perimeter. Deontay Neal. This is Sharp. Sharp against Evans. Evans has already been matched up against three different Ram players this opening quarter. Through traffic, leans to the right and swirls that one home. Deontay Neal. Good patience after the jump stop, trying to find the release point for that shot with defenders all around. Him. He is so quick and knows how to create separation and space for his shot. Williams on the ball, Ursa Moye. And look at that rebound on the way down. Harrison is snatched it out of the air. I could hear that through the headset, the power grabbing <laughs> that board. No look pass on the baseline. That's Lee. And a foul on the back end of it. Reedsville doing a nice job sharing the ball. As Neal drives in, the defense has to respect it. They go up to stop ball. Found an open teammate in Lee. So Lee back to the Carolina Hurricanes free throw line completes the three point play. It's a nine point early spread for Reedsville. Two and a half to go in the opening quarter. Whitehurst averaging 15 a game has not even had many offensive touches so far. He's number one opposite side of the floor. Hampton Evans. Out of Boye. Attacks Harrison and banks it in. That's not an easy finish. Well, he went right out of Harrison, took the contact, and still had the focus for the finish. Deontay Neal gets right around Whitehurst, forces the shot no good, tipped out of bounds. And it's going to stay with the Rams. Fifteen eight, Reedsville. On the baseline, Sharp hangs. Shot might have been blocked by Evans from behind. And the Jags have it and nearly threw it away. Good knockdown on the pass ahead by J.D. Daniels. Williams open look, yes. He's a top scorer for the Jags. First look of the game. Meg Brown home first. He's three-pointer. Stopped by Meg Brown today. Take advantage of their anniversary sale happening right now. 15-11, Reedsville. Harrison out of the short corner. Yes, that's going to be a three for Harrison. He's not your typical post player. There's a strip, a clean takeaway by Deontay Neal. Gathers it back in, switches hands, and lays it home. Five quick wins in the span of 10 seconds for Reedsville. And the Rams lead by nine. Timeout, Farmville Central. Deontay Neal, outstanding defensive play, and then just a wizard with the ball in his hands, weaving back and forth for the finish. But his quickness is next level, and they're getting out on the run. The Rams have done a nice job of pushing the pace when they've had the ball. Some coaches will sit on their timeouts. You got a minute left in the quarter. Larry Williford could have sat on, but I think his knowledge of how talented Reedsville is from last year, then their non-conference matchup a couple of months ago, he knows how explosive they can be, and he does not want to find his team 
in an uncomfortable spot, double digits down after a quarter. And you want to stop the momentum. Do not allow your opponent to gain any traction here. I like the timeout call there to stop it, bring your team over to the sideline, and readjust. All right, so here come the Jags up the floor with J.D. Daniels. Works against Lee. One minute left in the opening quarter. This is MJ Williams. Harrison hedges out off the bounce, forced a three, missed it. Defensive rebound grabbed by Cam Jones. They locate Harrison on the block, soft double. The kick out to Lee. That three is offline. Battle for the board. We're going to get a foul. Like Reedsville is hoping for maybe a, a jump ball call. Instead, a foul was called against Reedsville. And I like the defensive game plan as Harrison, this ball is shot. And here is just a scramble for the ball. But when the ball went into the post of Harrison, they doubled down, and you said, the kind of the soft double to force the kick out. And you can live with an outside shot. You cannot allow Harrison to dominate on the block. 30 seconds left in the opening quarter. Jags ball down nine. Evans delivers it away. Good fake by Williams. Frees himself up and that's everything but in. Jones another rebound. And Farmville Central facing maybe a double digit deficit at the end of one. Out of the corner. Three on the way. No. There's Harrison. And the stop for an 11 point lead. Play has been stopped as Harrison after the dunk took a step over the end line and accidentally kind of shouldered the basketball away. That might be a delayed game warning. I don't think there's going to be anything beyond that. I think Larry Williford was maybe looking for maybe a technical foul here, but I think at, at most that's a delay. Seven first quarter points for Kendra Harrison. Eight seconds left. Jags will get it in. Williams saving some time, is escorting the ball to midcourt. Now he picks up. Farmville Central could really use a bucket here at the horn for some momentum, and there it is. Scooping with the left hand is Williams, and that is going to do it for the opening quarter. And the defending champs on the ropes. Another slow start for Farmville Central. Well, they came through in the regional final a couple of days ago after spotting their opponent the first 10 of the game. After one, it is Reedsville up by nine on Farmville Central. 22-13. First quarter stats presented by the law offices of Roderick Todd McIver. Jay, what do you see? Uh, pretty even so far. Reedsville, though, just shooting the ball at a higher clip, getting the ball in the paint. A couple three pointers going their way for the Jags. Excellent start to the second quarter in the regional final. They're looking for the same thing here. CYA, call your attorney. Piedmont Federal Bank points to paint all square at 10 apiece. Piedmont Federal Bank, we invite you to bank better. Patrick Keenish, Jason Halter, second quarter action from Wake Forest. Defending champion of Farmville Central down by nine as we open things up to the team that they beat in the title game last year in Reedsville. Larry Williford, pretty emphatic conversation with his squad at the end of that opening quarter. He knows that as talented as Reedsville is, you cannot dig a hole game after game this deep in the playoffs and hope to escape. So let's see if the Jags kind of put something together here early to get right back into it. Deontay Neal working past Williams, delivers to the corner, hard drive, and it's thrown off the glass, blocking fouls the call. Anthony Evans seemed to be in pretty good position. We thought he was there to take the charge, but he is called for his first. They're trying to set up, did not get the call. Here's Evans. Looks like the right call. Yeah. But that's a play. I mean, if you're looking for some type of spark, some type of turn of the ignition for the Jaguars, it's a play like that that can get it done. Yeah, they can turn it on quick. They just need a momentum shift. So one more coming from the free throw line for Johnny Sharp. Three Rams already with seven points apiece. Neil Harrison and now Sharp. 
So that's 21 of their 24 from those three players. Chris Rhodes, number 24, on the floor for the first time for the Jags. Here's J.D. Daniel, hopping through, kicks to the point. Moye left open, hooks the three. The big round three-pointer. All created by the drive and the attraction of two defenders. A dribble penetration in Moye. Good outside touch. We've seen him with a couple paint buckets there going beyond the three-point line. 24 16 Rams. Deontay Neal does not want a screener. He draws Williams out toward midcourt. Count is on. Now Harrison will set a soft little screen. Harrison will re screen for Neal. Got a little hip on him that time. Drive in. And the shot was impacted by the defense by Evans. And here come the Jaguars without numbers, but a pretty good angle. The hole blocked a foul. And that will send the Jags to the free throw line. And Farmville Central is actually asking for goaltending. I don't think they're going to get it. And the foul charged against Sharp. That's going to be his second. And no hesitation from Moye going against two Rams as Sharp and Harrison were tracking him down, eyeing the block. But he went into the body to get to the line. So now it's Moye to the free throw line presented by Riddle and Brantley. Injured in an accident. Call Riddle and Brantley with Justice Counts. Moye averages nine a game already at 10 so far. Strong start to the game for the senior. Well, this is what Farmville Central is hoping to put together in the first couple of minutes of the second quarter. They've eaten into the deficit. A couple of free throws made by Moya. And now we'll see if there's any kind of full court pressure. This little token backcourt look. As Neal brings it ahead. Neal looking, lobs for Harrison. Perfect pass to the entry, fighting for it. And he's not going to take the ball away from Harrison there. About a four footer. Well, he put it in danger, bringing it low, quickly got his elbows up and shot it over the top. Moye finds Evans on the baseline, backing in. Tough match up here. And it's going to break out of his hands by Cam Jones. It's interesting, they're putting Hampton Evans in a lot of different spots on the floor. They did actually call a foul. So that is number one on Jones. So Williams will throw all the way out to midcourt. Over the shoulder grab by Moye. Down by eight are the Jags. They throw back to Daniels. Open look for three. A little bit long. There's Evans for the rebound. He got undercut. Submarine down. It's going to be a foul on Ali. And Evans' work on the offensive glass is going to be important today. Six foot six. He's got a battle, and he's doing it. Right there, forcing the foul. That's a dangerous play right there. Jags get it in, and undefended out of the corner. That's Rhodes right off the bench. Critical three. Here come the Jags. Out of a five-point game. Congestion on this side of the floor. Sharp spreads things out a bit. Some nifty moves. Now takes the screen. The lean in off one leg is in. Tough finish by Sharp. How smooth was that going one on one? Evans had room. Felt Harrison covering and goes reverse side for the layup. He didn't want to see a poster <laughs> block of a shot on the strong side. And good body control. And recognition there by Hampton Evans. And now these teams are getting into a flow of this game. 28-23, Reedville. Neal skids to a stop, almost walks. Sharp deflected into the back for the chase is on, and it's out of bounds. It was not touched. And Farmville Central. Rhodes has been that spark. Made the three, forces the turnover. And a timeout now taken by the Rams as they can feel the pendulum is swinging a bit to Farmville Central. Really like the use of the timeouts we've seen early in this one by Williford and now Jason Ross. Well, both coaches, two of the best in the state, and they've led their programs year in, year out to excellent seasons. And no surprise here, they know how to kind of handle this situation, this atmosphere here at the state championship. 
And coming up as fast as this game is coming, it's hard to believe it's almost time for the Popeyes halftime report, but that's what we will have. Interview with Q Tucker, the commissioner of the high school association. First have highlights and a lot more. Popeyes, love that chicken from Popeyes. And the play of the game coming up toward the end of our contest. Jay and I will select the 988 Suicide and Crisis Prevention Hotline play of the game. Call, text, or chat 988. We do that 24 7. Let's get through it together. 28 23 Reedsville. Farmville Central on a push as the defending champs. Jags get it in, and they put it right back in the hands of Rhodes. Leaning in, Moye. Partially blocked by Harrison. Evans had that blocked as well by Harrison. And here come the Rams. It's a one-on-one -on -one stepping past Neal. Reverse no. Harrison couldn't finish on the dunk. He wanted contact. And the Jags go the other way. Williams throws back. This is Rhodes again. A little short. Running down the offensive rebound, J.D. Daniels. And now a takeaway by the Rams. Into an action. This is a fun matchup. MJ Williams against Neal. Lee switches on a three. I tell you what, with these shooters, with these athletes, you leave a player unmarked yeah. on the outside, you're asking, you're just donating three points. And there's a foul on the Rams. That'll go on Sharp. It was almost an after the shot kick, a little sweep with the leg. And that's a big one against Sharp. So this one gearing up in Winston-Salem. Reedsville leads Farmville Central by eight. 350 remain in the second quarter. Well, later on in this contest in the fourth quarter, Jay and I will choose the West Shore home player of the game. West Shore home, bath remodeling made easy. Reedsville leading by eight, 31-23. But a big kind of plot twist just occurred right before that media timeout as Johnny is sharp, number three in white. At the back end of that shot, kind of caught him on the back of his leg, called for his third foul. It was a legit foul. We should get a better look at it here, Jay. What do you see? Yeah, and there's the contact there. He did not want this, but he did get that yeah. third foul. He's been off to a really strong start with nine points already. And you see him pleading his case, Coach Ross. We'll see if he sends him to the sideline to preserve himself till the second yeah. half. Yeah, he has subbed him out. He did so before they went to the sideline. What's the import to that as far as the way this offense and defense plays and the bench for the Rams at that spot? Well, he's a really good outside shooter, so you're going to have to have your depth and your bench come in and fill that role. But I think the number one key is with Sharp out, you've got to go back to your bread and butter, which is Neal and Kendra Harrison playing a two-man game. I'd go back to the pick and roll and let those two go to work. And now all Sharp can do on the sideline is be a cheerleader for the Rams, and he actually uh, embraced his replacement. It's Muhammad Adbel Dayam, a senior who doesn't get a lot of action, but he's out there, number 24, and he's going to replace Sharp certainly for the rest of the second quarter. I would imagine we'd see Sharp back in there to begin the second half, but we'll see. A lot of it might contingent on where the lead is, if there is a lead for Reedsville. And one more free throw coming for MJ Williams. He has six from the Riddle and Brantley free throw line. 31-24, rammed by seven. So one of two. High point in the rebound again, Kendra Harrison. It's already five rebounds in his first half. Here comes pressure. And it's tipped away to the sideline. Officials need help. Nobody's sure. And they will point it the other way. Neither made the initial call. But then they both made eye contact and said, I got it this way. How about you? And he said, yes. And here's a replay here. The right call going in favor of the Jags. A different look with the trap coming out of the timeout break. So here's the first little push by Farmville Central. Anthony Evans out there to set a screen for Williams. He will reject it, hook it back to Evans. This is a three off the mark. Offensive rebound, Daniels. And that was deflected away. Another crack. Williams, yes. MJ Williams, one of the top junior point guards in the state, the leading scorer, seeing his talent take over. And a foul against Williams in the backcourt after the made three. 31-27, Reedsville. 
Just another point on that possession. When Hampton Evans can step out and shoot it, Harrison had to defend the three-point line, opened up the paint, and allowed the Jazz to get the offensive board and kick it back out to Williams. Now we do see some full court pressure applied by the Jaguars. Now a trap on the perimeter. So they're throwing some different defensive looks at Reedsville for the first time. And it has probably a lot to do with the fact that Sharp is on the bench. Baseline drive and a force out foul and a go on J.D. Daniels, number two. I think if you're Larry Williford, you, you like right now with Neal on the bench, or probably with Sharp on the bench, you like what you just saw from your defense because Reesville wasn't exactly sure exactly how to attack it. it a little bit of bailout foul there. It is just making them slow down, just a little bit of a hesitation. They're not as comfortable as they looked early on. All right, here's Neal out of the corner. Sidles up the sideline with 2.50 to go in the half. Reedsville up by four. Neal shaking. Can't get rid of Moy. And a five-second call and a low five with his head coach after the turnover forced. And now the run could continue for Farmville Central. <laughs> Look at Larry Wilford. He's in the backcourt. He's on the floor in that defensive wide position. <laughs> Moye stops. Phillips is on the floor for the Jags at number 12. Williams, a reversal to Evans. He'll move it in the paint tentatively. That was blocked from behind by Harrison. Right back to Evans, and whirls right back to the hole and scores. The Jags are getting the loose balls. The extra fight, it pays off. And now a two-point Rams lead. And now almost a pure handoff to Hampton Evans. But fortunately for the Rams, they maintain possession. Reedsville just has to slow down, maintain their composure with Sharp out. The Jags are turning up the heat on the defensive end. And that is not coincidental. Sharp is such a critical ball handler and defender on this team. And that bounce pass went right through Odd Beldayem's hands in the corner. He came in to replace Sharp, and Sharp is pretty animated on the bench right now, doing his best to stay positive with his team. And now the Jags can tie with a two, take a lead with a three. And now we get a foul off of the ball. It's on Harrison, number two. Phillips got spilled to the deck, and that's number two on Kendra Harrison. It looks like he's coming out as well. Aiden Mansfield about to check in, number 15. And Harrison will head out with a couple of fouls. Boy, as smooth as the Rams looked in the first seven or eight minutes of this game. It's been a clunky last four minutes that have all coincided with the departure of Sharp on that third foul. And now the foul trouble starting to add up. So at the free throw line is Amari Phillips. 6'4 junior. There is a look at an anxious Johnny Sharp. Rams led by seven at the time he departed to the bench with three fouls. The first three throws missed by Phillips. Reminder, stay tuned. Popeye's halftime report coming up. First half highlights and more, including the visit with Q Tucker, the commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Popeye's love that chicken from Popeye's. Hoping for some maybe Uber Eats delivery at halftime. I'll take that. I'm hungry. One or two for Phillips. When are you not? Always. 31-30. Rams by one. They led by as many as nine. Deontay Neal breaks the pressure. Lee off the baseline. Didn't quite have the handle. Throws it right under the rim, though. It's a cardinal sin if you're a defender in the easy stick in by Jones. Jones the right place at the right time. Now, if I'm the Jags with Harrison out, I am driving, attacking the rim without the enforcer in the ball game. This is Williams to take against Neil No, and I'll tell you what, Phillips had that tip jam timed up, and I think it caught the rim a second time before it came off. And we get a foul on Farmville Central. So it's Reedsville ball with 1.11 left in the half, plus three. Uh, 
Pressure again applied. Neal breaks it. They whip it ahead. Deflected pass, though. Creates the chaos, and Moye got in front of that deflection and took it away. And a Reedsville foul on the back end of it. And that's a foul on Adbadayan. This pressure, the full court is forcing the ball out of Neal's hand. He's the best player on the court for Reedsville. And he's just trying to decipher and get through it, but he's having to pass the ball off, and Jags are just swarming. It's Boye already in double figures now with 12 points. One more coming from the Riddle and Brantley free throw line. Now we'll see Caleb Schaefer check in, replacing Nod Beldaya. So Jason Ross going further down the bench to find an adequate replacement with Sharp on the bench with three fouls. This is not a lineup that Reedsville has had on the floor very often this year, if at all, to be honest. Undefeated season. And Harrison is on the bench with a couple of fouls. Sharp is on the bench with three. They've now gone to their third string guard, getting Schaefer a rotation. As much as you want to have them out on the floor with the foul trouble, you have to hold off to the second half. I like the decision from Jason Ross. Now it's a one-point game with under a minute to go in the first half. Neal sprints past almost every defender in the books and can't quite spin that one in. Rebound Moye. Here's the outlet. It's being chased. Williams will get there and give the Jaguars the lead. They are comfortable playing fast. They make it look easy. What a fast break opportunity. And now Neal again right at the entire defense. There's a beautiful threaded pass to Lee. 35-34, Reedsville, 25 seconds left in the half. Evans fakes from three. They wanted to walk. Williams from deep, around and good. MJ Williams. And the game we expected to materialize in the state title rematch is upon us. Neal with five seconds left, throws in deep. An extra bounce pass, and we're tied again. And we're going to heave at the horn off the mark. Fittingly, Farmville Central, Reedsville, in a rematch from last year's state title, are tied. Yeah, the fans are allowed to stand and applaud after the first 16 minutes. And a remarkable final 16 minutes will determine the 2A title. Farmville Central and Reedsville never disappoints. You're watching the Popeye's Halftime Report. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Well, hey there, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the State Championship High School Basketball Games. Joining us is our longstanding partner all the way from Ingalls Markets, Miss Melissa Level. Melissa, are you loving these excellent I, basketball games? I love it. What a great season it's been, and the best of the best is right here now on television. Best of the best is right. <laughs> now, let's talk about that longstanding and robust partnership between Ingalls and High School Championship Athletics. What all does that entail? That it's just absolutely wonderful to be able to connect with all the schools within our region. You know, we're in six states, mm -hmm. and, and so we have Friday Night Live with football, we do basketball, we have softball, That's even right. some Olympic style sports and we go all the way up through college and then there are some minor leagues. But we just love that high school spirit and the fun with that. A lot of those players work with us, That's a lot right. of their parents have a, you know, a shop at our angle. So it's kind of like a big family coming to watch all of them play, right? Mm -hmm. So we love that. We we'll love it as well. Melissa, as always, thank you for taking the time to speak with us here today. Thank you. Alrighty, let's get back to the game, folks. You're watching the Popeyes Halftime Report. Love that chicken from Popeyes. Commissioner Tucker, we appreciate your time. Before we begin, congratulations on being inducted to the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that certainly was an honor that uh, it really caught me by surprise uh, when I got received that call uh, early in December and uh, still am very humbled. They uh, found me worthy enough to, to be included in a mix of some really outstanding uh, sports figures in North Carolina. What preparations have been made to ensure a smooth running of the basketball championships? You know, storming the court after a game has become one of those familiar sights as we've watched the colleges play and even football contests. Uh, so we have been working with uh, the folks at Lawrence Joel as well as our, uh, you know, hosts, 
uh, school system to try to make sure that we do not have anything that resembles that. Um, so we've tried to do all we can to make sure that it's uh, you know, easy to get into and that once you're inside, that it is an enjoyable experience, whether you're actually on the court playing, on the sideline coaching, or you're sitting and watching as a spectator. Can you highlight any notable changes to the format this year compared to previous years? All games are in the same venue. In the past, we've played at Reynolds Coliseum and the Dean e. Smith Center. And so we've had classifications at two separate sites. Well, this year, everybody's at the same site. How does the basketball championships benefit the student athletes' growth and development in the educational framework? The attention to details, uh, recognizing uh, that you have to persevere, uh, you have to be determined, you have to set goals. And, uh, and this will just be a, a continuation of that. Commissioner, what's been the biggest challenge for the association in the last year? I think there is this, uh, this idea out there, Jay, that we are the ones who make the rules. Those of us who come to work every day, that we hold the th authority and we have the power, which is so untrue. We have 436 member schools right now, and we work for them. And the association's had so many great accomplishments in the past year. What are you most proud of? I'm proud that we have remained true to our mission, and that is to provide those opportunities through our leadership and guidance. And I think we've been true to our mission. Uh, and then I'm proud of the fact that we have continued to offer uh, outstanding championships. And now I'm really proud that something that our basketball coaches have wanted for years that we're able to now have a Final Four type atmosphere um, for our basketball coaches. Thank you for your leadership, Commissioner Tucker, and we appreciate your time. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you all giving me this opportunity, as always, to talk about education-based athletics. You're watching the Popeye's Halftime Report. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Here are the best high school hoops plays of the season. Sports halftime report. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Quick hands with the steal and her control, her ball handling skills. Great move there. And a finish at the basket. Smalls the takeaway. Lobs it to the rim. And there is Trey Jones right in the elevator for the easy drop in. He was to the short corner. Ethan on took a swipe at it. And there's a block from the help side defender, Taylor Moore. And he it's Yanni Dunn running oh. through. Absolute pandemonium! We've got... Givens back up by 11. Reversal, yes! Oh. Off the bounce. Deep three, Schaefer. Wow! And went to the Raptors! Dropped through! Out to Nicholas. Got it! No one's no wins! Here across the country, and here the 2A men's basketball title game all square, 37-37, Farmville Central and Reedsville. And Jay, we saw Reedsville get out to a very quick start, trying to dethrone the Jaguars. It looked good for a while, and then, as expected, Farmville Central capitalized on some foul trouble for the Rams and a late break to tie things up. Uh, how lucky are we this first <laughs> half, as advertised, and the Rams came out high-flying, getting on the run and they set the tempo to this game. Harrison was efficient from the outside and down in the post. The Jags, though, fought their way back. They had a response. We knew they would find a way to come back. They turned up the pressure on the defensive end, and they picked up the pace on offense as well. And boy, a 13 points the first half. Williams had 14. And this will be an interesting second half because we know that we're going to see Sharp back on the floor, but he sat out about the last five minutes of that third, uh, probably of the second quarter that led the Jags to not only get back into it, but sniff out a tie. They added some pressure defense, and we saw how vital it is for Sharp to be on the floor, which will be one of the keys we'll watch. Yeah, for sure, and it's kind of a surprise. The Jags winning on the glass, plus five, Reedsville, seven to four on the turnover margin, but that was exciting first half, very even on each side. All right, those are your first half stats presented by the law offices of Roderick Todd McIver, CYA, call your attorney. And they points the paint. Also, 
in that first half. 18-16 advantage for Reedsville. We will come back. And a remarkable second half is in the often. It is Reedsville and Farmville Central tied at 37. Second half, the 2A title game next. Well, it's worth the wait. The rematch of last year's title game between Farmville Central and Reedsville. They're at it again. Act two. And at a stalemate after the first 16 minutes. Second half underway. Reedsville in the white. Farmville Central in the traveling black uniforms. 37-37 and a takeaway on the first possession. J.D. Daniels lost the handle as he tried to thread a bounce pass through. Deflected out of bounds to Farmville Central. It's an early push by the Rams. They got off quickly to a, ultimately a nine-point lead on Farmville Central. That was even late in the first quarter. Johnny is sharp on the floor with three fouls for the Rams. And a jumper out of the corner swirls out of there. No good. The rebound finally corralled by the Rams. And they bring it ahead quickly. Here is Sharp back on the floor. And there's his immediate impact. They need his production. 18 points per game firing away. Big Brown home furnishings three-pointer made by Sharp. He now has 12. And there's the response by Hampton Evans. First distance three of the game for him. So back-to-back -back threes open the second half. It's important for the bigs of the Jags to be able to hit that outside shot to pull Harrison out of the paint area. Deontay Neal finds Sharp. Screen from Harrison. Off-balance jumper. Yeah, he's ready to go. How important will it be for him to avoid that fourth foul for the Rams' chances to win the title? Well, if I'm the Jags, I'm going at him to try to send him over to the sideline with number four. Well, nowhere to go. Excellent interior defense by Harrison, but no box out. And flying in was Hampton Evans. It's relentless on the offensive glass. You've got to find a man and box him out. Every championship team needs and has a player like a Hampton Evans. And that one just spun out of there by Neal. And he's rebounding Evans. He's making some outside shots. He's crashing the glass. And there's another three from Hampton Evans. Two threes by Evans in the first two minutes of this third quarter. Showing off his talent. Play inside and outside. Very confident player. And that one is missed by Sharp. Rebound to Farmville Central. Two minutes gone by in the third quarter. Jags lead by three. Can add to a lead for the first time. Little step back. Williams, no. Offensive rebound, Evans. And Hampton Evans have a quarter in the state title game. He has 10 points already in this quarter. We played barely two minutes. Timeout, Reedsville. And Hampton Evans owning the Joel Coliseum at this moment. The passion, the intensity of Evans carrying over to his teammates, but already two offensive boards, just hustling more, getting in position, crashing the glass. And one of the outgoing seniors, there are a lot of them on this Farmville Central side. Average about 14 a game in the regular season, had only four points in the first half, but he's done it from distance. He's done it crashing the offensive glass. He's helped out on the defensive end as well. Big, big, enormous start to this third quarter for Evans. And Farmville Central, by the way, now leads by five. We talked in the regional finals how the first quarter they went down, but then a value comeback the second quarter throughout. Similar so far in this game down against the Rams, but now they've gotten high, gotten into their groove. And now very important for the Rams not only to run their stuff and get some points to the board, but even more of an emphasis on Johnny is sharp avoiding that fourth foul because his team now trails by five. They gave up most of their lead when he went out with three fouls. How about that behind the back pass and the finish by Harrison. What a what a look by Deontay Neal. Eyes in the back of his head. J.D. Daniels sizing up Harrison. Nowhere to go on that pass out front, tipped away and stolen, and maybe thrown away, and it is. 
And Al Lee, the quarterback on the Reedsville football team, kind of lifts his jersey over his mouth a little bit. Disappointed with that finish. Five minutes to play, third quarter. Jaguars lead by three. Evans comes out to set the screen to Williams. Harassed and still able to finish off glass with the left hand. Finish and through the contact. And Jay, you're right about this Farmville Central team. They have found their groove and they are not giving an inch right now, especially on the offensive end. And we get a foul on Farmville Central here. That's going to go against, I believe, Moye. That's his seconds. Sharp so smooth with the spin move, but back to the Jags. Sometimes you worry you're playing so well when you've got a hot momentum going into the halftime break. Can you kind of pull it back out to start the third quarter? And they haven't slowed down. So Sharp at the Riddle and Brantley free throw line makes the first. Talk to the outset of the broadcast about kind of a year of redemption across Reedsville Athletics. Last year, the Rams basketball team, as we mentioned, beaten by Farmville Central for the state title game. Their football team also lost in the state championship game last year. This year, the football team won the 2A title. And now the basketball team, with 10 players on this basketball team, on the football championship team, they're trying to avoid a runner-up and win it this year and complete the sweep. Shot block right back to the Jaguars. Fall away jumper miss. There's Evans again. A double block, but a foul lower body will send Hampton Evans to the free throw line, and he just keeps on churning in this third quarter. He's taking over this ball game. Excellent block with the timing of Harrison. What an athlete. That range that he has. Enforcer in the middle. One more coming for Evans. Riddle and Brantley injured in an accident. Call Riddle and Brantley when justice counts. 49-46, Jaguars. This is an 11-point quarter for Evans. The team has scored 13. So Neal into the forecourt against Williams. Evans is battling against Harrison Hard. I mean, physicality down there a moment ago. Harrison sets the screen. Here's Sharp. Sharp attacks from the top, leads a bounce pass as he falls over, and Harrison just about pulled the rim off of the glass. 50 to 48, Jaguars by two. Uh, and that's a spark that the Rams can build on. Nice dish over to Harrison. Oye on the baseline, not a lot of room. The reload hit the side of the glass, and look at Harrison has ripped that rebound away. He's helping to run the floor. Neal drives, attacks, and ties the game. 50-50, loose ball down the floor being chased. It goes out of bounds to Farmville Central. We were tied 37-37 and a half. We're almost five minutes deep into the third quarter, tied again. 50-50 for these two East-West rivals battling for a state title again. Let's take a look at this dish and dunk. It's Kendra Harrison. I mentioned he almost took the rim down. A month ago, he did in a game against Moorhead. It was back in February. He went up there, hung on, said he's going to maybe twist a little bit. Next thing you know, he's landing on the court, and the rim is in his hands. And that halted play for a while as he did his best Daryl Dawkins impersonation. 50-50. <laughs> Back in Winston-Salem. About three and a half minutes left in this third quarter. And there is Kendra Harrison, stands 6-7. The number one rated sophomore tight end in high school football in America. And he was part of winning that state championship a couple of months ago for football for Reedsville. Short jumper missed, rebound Reedsville. And after falling back by five, they can shoot for the lead here. Neal forces a lean-in jumper, missed it. Offensive rebound to the Rams. And a little extra action underneath the rim. Good work by Cam Jones to get on that one. And it will belong to Farmville Central. As 
Uh, initially, it looked like they pointed that it was going to stay Reedsville basketball, but Jones had the ball on his back across the baseline, and I think the official has just clarified with all the players, hey, I meant to point the other way. It was an obvious out-of-bounds violation by the Rams. Fake by Daniels. They play it back up top. Again, 11-point third quarter for number 10. Hampton Evans who sets the screen, flares away, and missed the jumper, but it's a travel before the reversal on Hampton Evans. It's a rare mistake by Farmville Central in this third quarter. Landon Barnes in for the first time, I believe, all game, replacing Evans. Chance to give Evans just a little breather here after that timeout. And he'll head to the bench. He'll be a critical piece for the Jaguars' title offense in the fourth quarter. And Larry Williford, nice job just kind of spelling him here, but he'll, he'll be back in the game very quick. Neal looking to the interior, finds Harrison. Harrison loops it out on a diagonal. Open look by Lee and is blocked into the corner. Saved by the Jags, quickly down the floor. The shovel pass and then strip out of the hands of Barnes. And a block. Call against Reedsville. It's on Neal. And he is having an out-of-body experience on his reactions to that foul. Oh, I get it. Williams up top, Moye. Got it. That's a three for Moye. His second of the game. Another big Brown home furnishings three pointer. And a quick whistle as Farmville Central goes back up by three. It looks like there's a delay of game warning issued right there after the made three. A reminder coming up. In the fourth quarter, 988 Suicide and Crisis Prevention Hotline play of the game. Jay and I will have that call, text, or chat, 988. We do that 24-7. Let's get through it together. Wheeling into the paint, and the easy short jumper makes it a one-point lead for Farmville Central. Cameron Jones, the top defender for Reedsville, showing off his offensive talent. This is Williams over to the sideline. Daniels will jump it back out front. Williams goes against Neal, pokes it away to midcourt. Neal gets to it fast, runs past the defender, switches hands, and Moye blocks it out of bounds. How did he block it out of bounds? How did he keep his balance as he skies here? Timing. <laughs> Neal thought Moye was coming from the other direction. He looked over his right shoulder, and that allowed Moye a chance to close over his left. And a quick foul on the inbounds. This will go against Farmville Central. It's going to be charged against Rhodes. And that hustle, uh, it's something you expect, but still it's amazing to see Moye not give up and fight all the way to come back and send that ball out of bounds. Yeah. Inside a minute and a half, Harrison just flips it off at Neal. Barry's one from the sideline. Reedsville by two. Neal's got to continue to look for his shot. Such a talented offensive player. Screen set by Barnes. Williams gives to the sideline. This is Rhodes. Rebound to Reedsville. They look ahead. Pass a little bit behind Sharp. And four bodies go after a watch, man. Sharp with that left shoulder exposed. Let's hope he's all right. His left shoulder got trapped underneath the chest of Rhodes on the floor. And yeah, he's. He's walking off in some pain here. And I, I could feel that pain as he was down at live action. The bodies were falling, and yeah, he, he certainly felt it. And we're going to play like that, like a dislocation or a hyperextension. He still is wincing a bit. 55 seconds left in the third. Reedsville leads by two. 
And Sharp is still fighting through. And now we get a different resolution of the play. And it's going to belong to Reedsville with 55 seconds left. And Larry, Larry Willifer on the sideline is saying, wait, that's our ball. I think if it's a jump ball call, I think Larry feels like the possession arrow might have been pointing the wrong direction as they made that call. But as it stands, Reedsville ball. Here's Sharp testing the shoulder, testing the leg, spins hard, gets the hole, and gets fouled. And he'll walk this one off toward the tunnel to buy himself a little more time. He's had a rough last couple of minutes. Excellent effort here, playing through the contact in the pain. Such a talented offensive player with the production of Harrison and Neal and Sharp. Those three right around 19 points per game. For him to hold off the three fouls going to the break, he's been able to maintain that. It's been huge for him to be out on the court. Right, Hampton Evans is about to check back in for Farville Central. First of two is booked by Sharp. A reminder coming up at the end of today's game, Jay and I will select the player of the game presented by West Shore Home. Bath remodeling made easy. This is one of those games, Jay, I wish would never end. <laughs> so hopefully our player of the game will be, you know, June. Both free throws made. It's a four-point lead for Reedsville. This truly is one of those special games. Figured to be this way down to the end. Inside the last 30 seconds. MJ Williams works against Deontay Neal, takes the screen from Evans. Williams harassed, long ballooning skip gets to the hands of Rose. Inside Evans, two defenders in the air, blocked, ripped out of there by Harrison. 13 seconds left. Look at Harrison with the handles, driving right over bodies, and it's a blocking foul on Farville Central. Arms on the back of the head of Larry Williford. We'll take a look. Harrison trying to go coast to coast credit. Chris Smith, number 14, setting up here. Mm. The train coming downhill with Harrison. He didn't get the call, but still. Hey, what that's, an unselfish play. That is massive courage to Barnes. even step in there and try to take a charge by Barnes. Whether he did take a charge, I guess, is up for debate. But to stand in front of a potential NFL tight end coming at full speed downhill, maybe something that I'm not going to teach my two-year-old to do. <laughs> good job, Landon Barnes. Five seconds to play. And there's a tank away by Farmville Central. A long heave. Oh, most. Slightly short from MJ Williams. But the Jaguars get the defense. And we will head to the final eight minutes of the 2A title rematch from a year ago. And it's That's through three quarters, presented by the law offices of Roderick Todd McIver. CYA, call your attorney. Reedsville up by four. What sticks out? Now both teams shooting 42% from beyond the three-point line, and this has been a physical ball game. The Jags undersized, but they're winning on the glass. And also, only eight turnovers, but Reedsville has found a way to create a four-point lead going into the fourth. Piedmont Federal Bank points the paint. Reedsville plus four in that category. Piedmont Federal Bank, we invite you to bank better. Well, we mentioned how important it was, especially when Farmville Central in that third quarter went up by five for Johnny and Sharp to avoid that fourth foul. He has. Reedsville now up by four, and they're in a lot better foul position than they were coming out of halftime. And with Harrison, two fouls going into the break. Hasn't had one since, so that's another big factor. Those two controlling their play and staying out of trouble. Farmville Central possession to begin the final eight minutes of regulation. They beat Reedsville 75-63 last year in the title game. A reload off the baseline, some contact, no foul. Harrison, the outlet. Deontay Neal dribbled off his foot through traffic, turns it over. 
Hampton Evans hands it off. Whistle and a block. This will go on Reedsville's Cam Jones. Number three on Jones. The Boye 16, Williams 16, Evans with 15. The three leading scorers for the Jaguars. Meanwhile, four already in double figures for Reedsville. Paced by Sharps 18. Haven't seen a lot to Tyler Whitehurst. He's back out there for the Jaguars. Bounce to the inside. Daniels can't finish. Another whistle. And this is going to go against Farmville Central. And that's going to be the third foul on J.D. Daniels. Well, they need a towel. And here it comes off the side near midcourt. The officials and some of the players were trying to just use the, the <laughs> traction on the bottom of their basketball high tops to clean it up. They were doing the best they could. <laughs> the towel was needed, calling the reinforcement. Is that a ShamWow? <laughs> they buy that at 2 in the morning on some late Saturday night? And now Larry Willifin's kind of acting as this might be some kind of De facto timeout. He caught three of his guys over the sideline for a quick word. So now we are back underway. 57 53 Reedsville, fourth quarter, early stages. Trying to win their first state title in 21 years. Farmville tries to defend. Soft pass. Oh, J.D. Daniels almost got there. Switching up the look in his own defense. Here's Lee. Rims off a three. Harrison kept the rebound alive, and it's out of bounds, and it belongs to Farmville Central. We saw the Jags in the second quarter go to a pressure look. Here come in to start the fourth. Zone defense changing things up. Try to slow down the Rams. So J.D. Daniels against Neal. Now Williams. He's... Daniels into the corner. Good fake there. Moye too hard off glass. Evans kept it alive right back to Moye, and he got hit, but no fouls. Simply out of bounds off of Reedsville's Cam Jones. It's fun to watch the bigs down low, scrapping for the ball. And using the shot fakes to try to get the Rams up. Moye was job to get him off balance, but they stayed up and down, knocking the ball out of bounds. Moye still looking, now has to burn a timeout. Larry Williford happened to save the possession, but he's unhappy that they just had to use the timeout to do so because in a game like this, you want to have every opportunity in the last couple of minutes to set up your D, set up your press, set up your best you know, baseline out of bounds play, whatever you need in a tight game like this to win a state title. You don't want to be uh, devoid of timeouts when you really need them later. Yeah, you want to have them all in the bag. And now during this break, an opportunity for everybody to kind of catch their breath breath yeah. and reassess and make sure they're on the same page but this is a big possession for the Jags. Well the crowd for this game is fantastic. Excellent atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, most of the games we've seen the championship games yesterday and today haven't really seen any fans in the upper bowl here at the Joel Coliseum but there are plenty of fans at the upper bowl for this one and I would imagine also for the 4A men's game that's coming up. Jags will just beat the clock and get it into a leaping Whitehurst. Pass back to Rhodes out of the corner. And Harrison, yet another rebound. That's number nine. Neither team has scratched in this fourth quarter. Neal, left open. A little bit strong. And it's out of bounds to Farmville Central. J.D. Daniels is back in for the Jaguars. Jason Ross just angrily smacked his hands together. Oh, he, trying to build a lead. You don't, you don't want to give Farmville Central opportunities where you feel like you should be maybe up eight, nine points. It's only four. 
Good open look. Here's Daniels. And then it passes. Booted out of bounds into the Jags bench. I mean, you can read the tension on both of these coaches' faces. Two minutes have gone by in this fourth quarter. Nobody has scored. Moye delivers out of the corner. Evans, yes! Stays hot. Reedsville now leads by just one. It's been his half. And he floated out to the perimeter. And no one saw him. Excellent reversal to get him the ball. 14 points in the second half for Hampton Evans. Sharp jumps it out. Oh, it's soft. It's tipped. The Jacks aren't quite sure where it was. It's retrieved, though, by Lee. Up ahead, Harrison. Some contact, no foul, and Harrison drops it in and returns the lead to three. It's so agile down low, as Evans is setting up for the charge, just spun right around him. Great separation. Williams now into the corner. J.D. Daniels finds Evans on the other side of the floor this time. Tip pass, knocked down by the Jags, kept alive by Williams. Much better defense this time on the Rams, and there's a turnover. Up ahead, Sharp with the one-hand thunder dunk. Reedsville by five. Out of the corner, Rose, side of the rim. Moye couldn't take it away, and the rebound to Cam Jones. And now the Reedsville Ram fans rise up by five and with momentum. Lee, left corner, a little bit long. Battle for the board, the Rams will get it, and we get a tie up. Arrow to Reedsville. Let's take a look at the CR legal team. Fast break, commitment, results, CR legal team. Well, Sharp ready for takeoff, a big bucket. And Deontay Neal once again leading the fast break. About that one-handed pass, never even really had full control of the ball, just kind of <laughs> directed the pass in the direction of Sharp. And how impactful has he been? I mean, he knows he doesn't help his team at all by sitting on the bench for five minutes in the second quarter with three fouls. I mean, he's been the changing agent for the Rams in this second half with his defense, with his offense, and also the fact that he has not picked up his fourth foul. Yeah, just so impressed by his play, not only on the offensive end, excellent on the defensive side as well. They missed him when he was out in the first half, but what he's been able to do is really create a big boost and some of that momentum here on Reedsville's run. All right, Jay, Farmville Central now down by five as we flip back the other way. What are they not doing offensively that's uh, causing a little bit of a clunky efficiency. Well, they're at their best when they're out on the fast break and out in transition. But if they're in their half court offense, I think they've got to go back to MJ Williams and set him up with some pick and roll opportunities. Him and Hampton Evans working together as a two man game and let them kind of create on the offensive side. So there is Hampton Evans, the senior who had four points at halftime, put up 10 points in a couple of minutes to begin the third quarter. And he now has 18 points across the game to lead the Jaguars. It is Reedsville basketball with a five-point lead. First and foremost here for Farmville Central. They need a stop here. Lob to the rim for Harrison. Grabs it, shoots over Evans, banks it too strong. And boy, a nice hard rebound for Farmville Central. And here comes Williams cutting across the lane. There's contact, got it to the rim. Looked like that would have counted had it gone in following the official. MJ oh, Williams well, has started since his freshman year. You know, so shifty, controlled the pace. And that was a nice take, just forcing the issue. Williams to the Carolina Hurricanes free throw line. Go to hurricanes.com slash tickets. Be part of the action. Let's go Canes. One more coming for Williams. He now has 17 points. Four sixteen remains in regulation. Farmville Central trying to win a state title for the fifth time in six years. The only time they didn't, they still made the state title game and lost. A remarkable run 
of elite consistency by the Jaguars and Larry Wilford. Four minutes left. Three-point Reedsville game. Neal stops and starts. And the defender, Rhodes, sticks right with him. Look at those eyes. Locked on the ball. Neal, contact. Swoops in. Spins it short. Tip no. Evans the rebound. Three on two for Farmville Central. Attacking off the glass. Yes, from Moye. One-point game. They're so fast on the break. Difficult to get back in transition defense. Long three on the way. Good as Sharp gets absolutely floored after he hammered it home. No foul, but it's a four-point lead for Reedsville. 3.15 to go. Into the lane, bank shot in and out from Daniels, and the rebound of the Rams. Into the half court, Neal. We close it on three minutes. Neal in trouble, throws it away, a steal by Williams. Williams patiently weaving, big block by Harrison, but right back to Moye. Moye, dangerous pass, that gets through. They feed Evans. Is he still hot? No, off the heel. Rams with the board. We're due a media timeout next dead ball, but we're playing through. 2.40 left in regulation. And now we do get a timeout. 64-60, Reedsville. Final couple of moments of this fourth quarter. Hang on. Is there a title of friends or is there a new king at 2A? Reedsville leads by four. Reedsville leading to Farmville Central. 2.37 left in regulation of the 2A title game. Barry Seed taking a swig right there as Kendra Harrison. He got a little bit of quick assistance off of the floor as that timeout was breaking. Didn't see a lot of treatment. It looked like he just kind of mouthed to his teammates like he's all right. Uh, but something occurred right at the end. Uh, maybe, maybe it was just a cramp. That might be the issue here as he's kind of reaching down, Jay. What do you think? They need him for the final stretch run, fighting through it. But yeah, it was kind of alarming going into that timeout, seeing him pulled to the side. 15 points, 10 rebounds for Harrison, three blocks. We'll watch him. If it was a cramp, we'll watch his movement. Right now, he's on the right baseline. Deal into the half court for Reedsville, up by four. Lee gets it back to Neal. Playing a little keep away here. That pass is kicked into the back court by Rhodes. Too early at all to start thinking about fouling here for Farmville Central. Far, far too early. So just play tight defense, extend, trap if you can. And they're showing a zone pressure. It looks like they're switching up. They're switching up the defense. They have forced no. 13 turnovers by the Rams. They're weaving his Neal, and he nearly lost it. It's out of bounds, and will stay with Reedsville. So it's not as though the Rams have been clean with the basketball in the game. So, I mean, again, with the defense we've seen from Farmville Central, they can force some turnovers here. They almost did. 2.15 remaining. This has been a 30-second-plus possession for Reedsville. 64-60 Rams. Lee lays it up top to Sharp. Now they chase him with two defenders. Skip pass. Oh, good catch made by Al Lee, the quarterback of the football team. Ball lost out of bounds, and it's last touch by Reedsville. And Larry Williford smacking his hands into light, going to the other end of his bench as his defense got the turnover they needed. The pressure paying off, and Larry Williford has talked about how hard they focus on the defensive end in practice. Maybe 85% of their practice is on defense. It pays off there. Now by four, screened by Evans. Williams puts his head down, and Harrison appears to be fine. Block shot number four. Stays with the Jaguars, down by four. Boye on the crossover into the paint, and another block by Harrison. Rhodes has it. Harrison blocks another one. Back inside Moye, and he throws on two bounces to his head coach. Kendra Harrison. Block after block after block to protect a four-point lead for the state title. 
Amazing effort from Harrison. When you go into the paint, he <laughs> rejects the back to back to back. You've got to change up your game plan. You've got to try to pull the ball out, attack in a different way. And it's 33 to go. Foul on the Jaguars, non shooting. And the Rams will get it into the backcourt. Neal sprints ahead. And now they'll try to milk some clock if they can. He'll drive in, goes to hole, and Evans blocks it away. That's something Reedsville didn't need. Jaguars the other way to the hole. Daniels will lay it in. Two-point game. And a timeout by the Jaguars. And they were able to get out in transition, beat Harrison down the floor. 64-62 Reedsville. It is a full timeout by Farmville Central. Excellent take from J.D. Daniels with the touch. Harrison sprinting back, couldn't get there in time to help out his teammates. All right, Jay, take us into both huddles. We're looking at Farmville Central. You're on defense here. What's the message during this timeout? I think we're going to continue to see trapping and pressure, trying to force the issue and create turnovers. And I think that Larry Williford has confidence in his guards and their quickness that they can try to speed up the Rams. And over on the other side for Reedsville, you've got to put your trust in Deontay Neal. But here in this possession, it's got to go to Harrison, Neal, or Sharp. Those are your three best offensive players. Ideally, you want Neal to control it and maybe get a pick and roll situation set up with Harrison. Curious to see what the shot selection will look like for Reedsville, because we just saw maybe a little bit of a rushed offense in the set when you're up by four. The missed shot or the altered shot, thanks to Hampton Evans on the defensive side, really led to the odd man opportunity and offensive transition for the Jaguars. Reedsville only one timeout left. So the Rams will throw in length of the floor with a two point lead. This is the moment they've been waiting 12 months for. Can they close out the defending champs? A lot of contact. Foul on Rhodes in the backcourt. But the pressure was having an impact on Deontay Neal. And we expected the trap, and Neal got He split through the first one. So elusive, and then got the foul. Jags sprinting around trying to chase him. A difficult task. Again, it's a non-shooting foul. Second charge against Rhodes. So Reedsville will throw in three quarter court. 109 left in regulation. Short pass tip. Oh man, I tell you what, this is not terribly convincing what we've seen in the last 40 seconds or so from the Rams. And Reedsville has to spread out. Everybody yeah. bunched in close to lead. And it's also a, it's a spot throw in. And right in front of the Jack can't bench. move. And Lee will get it into Deontay Neal. Being chased again. And contact coming into the sideline. That's going to be a foul against MJ Williams. Third on Williams. And again, Farmville Central had fouls to give, and they're taking him up right here. So you can be a little bit over aggressive going for steals, making some contact. 105 left. And the Rams get it in to Sharp. Neal in the backcourt, whips it over. This is Lee. He's chased. We're under a minute. Jones, sharp, attacks, lost the handle, and a foul right before the turnover. And that was a hard fall by Sharp. 46 seconds left. Uh, credit the Rams being able to use the clock here and withhold any turnovers and now they get to the line but sharp what a game he's had so physical he is six of six from the line 46 seconds left and sharp makes it a three-point game I mean for most all of these Rams on the floor they remember the sour taste of the loss that Farmville Central handled handed them last year they're 46 seconds away, but they still have a lot of execution to do. The lead is four. Jaguar basketball. Clock under 45 seconds. Moye 
Hard drive, got in the hole, bank shot, no, follows in his own miss. And a Farmville Central timeout. 35 seconds left, back to a two-point spread. I just love the energy that Moye plays with. Physical goes into Jones and then just fights again to get that board. His team needs a bucket. He comes through. I mean, he had no help on the offensive glass. That was Moye or nobody. And Moye only six foot two. Just think about that. Inside, he's able to dominate because of his hustle, athleticism. Just playing so hard, and they needed that bucket. And now, one timeout for each team. Farmville Central, though, can set up their press. I mean, it's broadly speaking, th this is what is so great about high school basketball. The respect from across the state between these two programs, Reedsville and Farmville Central. They're separated by hundreds of miles. They played for a state title last year. Farmville Central claimed it. They played again in a holiday tournament a couple days after Christmas. Reedsville won that game by 10. Here they are again, and this is the best battle of the three. 35 seconds left for a state title, and a two-point separation between the two phenomenally talented teams. And after they won on Wednesday in the regional final, both sides talked about how they wanted each other. They wanted yeah. this matchup. So the Rams will get it in. They face some full court man to man. Trap coming. And we'll see how the Rams handle it. Lee doubled up. And a foul on Farmville Central with 28 seconds left. Fourth foul on Moye. So now it's Al Lee to the free throw line. He's only been there once today. It's a two shot foul with 28 seconds left. Three-point game. We talked about the pursuit of Reedsville. Runner-up in football last year in the state. Runner-up in basketball. Football won the state title behind Ali. And Ali has just given Reedsville a four-point lead with 28 seconds left. Looking to book in state titles. Football, men's basketball trying to take down the champs. Williams into the corner. Whitehurst. Where did Whitehurst come from? First points of the game. A three out of the corner for Tyler Whitehurst. 68-67, Reedsville. 17 seconds left. That pressure shot, Whitehurst comes through. Only second shot of the game. Confident, <laughs> held his hand up there, finishing it off right in front of his bench. And over the extended arm, I mean, Lee is a hangnail away from blocking that shot. He was that close. Oh, man. Oh, man. Championship teams aren't just about stars. They're about everybody. you got to be ready for your moment. Tyler Whitehurst, I mean, he's been a key guy for this team all year, 15 a game. Hadn't scored all game and, frankly, hadn't played very much. And no bigger shot for Whitehurst than that one. But they still trail by one. Well, Reedsville has to express, expect pressure from the Jags. They're going to try to get the ball into Deontay Neal and let him weave through. No turnovers here. Of course, protect the ball, get to the line. You've got to hit your free throws. Yeah. But now the fact that number one just made that three-pointer if you don't get the turnover or the steal and you foul, Reedsville makes both free throws, you still have life. 18 seconds left. Full court pressure applied by the Jaguars. All five are in the backcourt. And one of the officials is at the scorer's desk just checking on something. Maybe the arrow, maybe the clock. And a little extra time to coach for Larry Williford. Will he decade of dynasty continue for Farmville Central. And now Larry, he's getting hot. One of the officials, this might be a substitution issue. And Jason Ross wants a timeout if they can grant it. He's looking at the officials saying, I want a timeout. Moye in the ball game with yeah. four fouls. It so, looked like they were trying to take him out. Here we go. They get it in. And we get a foul on Farmville Central. 
And good recognition from Chris Rhodes as Boye came over on the trap. He held his hand straight up and allowed Rhodes to make the foul. All right, so it'll be Johnny is sharp. His absence was notable the final five minutes of that second quarter, which allowed Farmville Central to rally to tie things up at halftime. He's come back, he's played foul free and beautiful basketball. He's hit the line to body English to get that one to go. <laughs> Will that one in? <laughs> Two point game. 16 seconds left. Farmville Central's out of timeouts. Now the Jags, if this is made, you can still go for two. Don't necessarily yeah. have to have the three. All right, here we go. Sharp delivers. Three-point game. So the Jags with no timeouts. Clock running and a foul taken in the backcourt by Deontay Neal. Now Farmville Central is not yet in the bonus. So now, like we saw a couple of minutes ago with Farmville Central taking some fouls, they will not result in free throws. That's exactly what the Rams are doing here. And they still have a foul to get. It's now in to Williams. And the D for the Rams, 10 seconds away from the title. This is for the tie, and it's good! It's good! Five seconds left. Sharp gets it off. Here's Lee. Passes with under a second on the way. No good from Jones. MJ Williams ties the game in the final 10 seconds. And the state title game we hoped wouldn't end hasn't. Amazing here. Pick. Evans sets it up. Pressure shot. Williams wanted it. Beautiful look here. New is going in as soon as it left his hands. So the big three by Tyler Whitehurst cut it to one. The big three from MJ Williams with eight seconds left sends the sequel to overtime. We feel you. This is better than we could have <laughs> even expected. And Patrick, the Rams, they've gotten fouled. Their players have made their free throws. And then on the other side, Whitehurst, Williams, your team needs a three. They came through each side as making plays to get to this point. Yeah, Reedsville did nothing to allow Farmville Central back into this game. They made their free throws. Farmville Central just made everything yeah. down the stretch. No mistakes. It's excellent play. So move the clock to four minutes. The 2A title game will be stretched into overtime. No kidding, the fans should be giving these players a standing ovation as they come back on the floor for overtime. I think they're taking a breath, taking a second yeah. here to regroup. I mean, what, what an honor to be part of this one. And we will jump center just as we did almost two hours ago. Harrison and Evans. How impactful have they been on their team's prospects tonight? Tip control by the Rams. A little extra energy by the Jags. Oh, this perimeter, a little trap on the zone defense. Sharp, the leader, yes. First lead of OT to Reedsville. Uh, one three zone. The Jags used in the fourth quarter. They started off with Sharp under control, maneuvering the pressure. Nice floater. This is MJ Williams. Finds Evans. Deflected pass out of bounds. One thing I did want to mention after Williams made that three, there was no. Plenty of celebration by the Jaguar fans. There was no celebration by the Jaguar players because they knew they had to defend 10 more seconds. Drive in, shot alter, tipped up. Oh, yeah, how did that go by Moye? The four fouls oh. continuing to play hard, giving up his body to tip that one in. 72 all. Neal. Draws out Williams. Here comes Jones to set a screen. Neal bursting through, gets to the hole, blew the layup. Harrison the rebound and the putback for a two-point Ram lead. 
And Harrison limping back up the court. Yeah, he's yeah. in pain. Looks I like think he's locked cramps. up. I think it's cramps again, Jay. Let's see if the Jags notice it. Harrison couldn't really leap on that three-point attempt. It's missed, though. And the rebound to the Rams. And now Harrison, he's right in front of his bench, wins it. He can barely walk, and he's about to go down. He has a serious cramp, I think, in his right leg. But the officials will play on. Toss to Jones, driving in, scoops it out. There's Harrison on one leg, can't finish. And the Jaguars with the board, and Harrison will see if he even makes it down the floor. Jaguars, meanwhile, throw it away. And that's Moya who went crashing off of the floor. The players giving everything they have, and Harrison looking over to the sideline, still in and, pain. And a timeout taken. I mean, there's the great effort by Moye right there. If you've ever played a sport where cramps have locked you up, you can't walk them off. It makes it worse. You need time, you need hydration, stretching. But again, everybody is feeling the effects right now. This has been a high-level basketball for two hours. And we're not yet done. Two minutes left in overtime. Well, the conditioning for both teams is next level. And there, over on the sideline, yeah. Moye. That's Moye. He's, he's still in the He has four fouls. It looked like J.D. Daniels just went in, potentially, to check in during the break. Harrison taking in the fluids. Yeah, I mean, you usually see it's a lot of massages at the calves. A lot of times the calves just blow up when they're when they're seizing, when they're dealing with cramps. It just gives an idea of how hard these guys have played over the last couple hours. It's going to be Reedsville basketball. 2.06 left in overtime. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if either Larry Williford or Jason Ross cramp up before this one ends. <laughs> Yeah, there's Boye heading back to the bench. He will be subbed out for a moment or two. Harrison's coming off the bench. He's trying to come back in. So the officials, anybody with an earshot, I'm all right. I'm all right. Which is athlete speak for, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I'm going to fight through it. <laughs> and he's still flexing out that right leg in the front court. Each team one timeout left. And the Rams will get it in. Deontay Neal will walk it into the half court for the Rams, up by two in overtime. Neal runs away from a defender, cuts in, finds Harrison, spinning, gets the hole, left it short, got his own miss, and powers it in through cramps. Four-point lead for Reedsville. Carmel Central ball, passing the corner, Whitehurst again. Oh, look out! Where did he come from? Whitehurst to the rescue again. He highlighted Whitehurst in the open, and you see his talent taking over. Another big three-pointer. 76-75 Rams. Jones throws over to Lee with a minute 10. Back into the trustworthy hands of their point guard. Jones down the lane, attacks. Offensive foul taken by Hampton Evans. Fourth on Jones. And Evans, 18 points, eight boards. And gets the call here on the charge. What a turn here, giving the ball back. To Farmville Central. And now Boye does return. He's had about a 30-second breather on the bench. He was dealing with cramps a moment ago. Farmville Central has not landed in overtime. Down by one. Williams with the left. Oh, goodness! How did that go? Brought them all down to his left hip. Scooped it in amongst traffic. Farmville Central in front by one. There's a rainbow over Harrison trying to block it. Final 35 seconds. 
Sharp spins, slips. And a timeout to Reedsville. 29 seconds left. And the last Graham timeout. Gives everybody a chance to catch a breath. Okay, how you doing? I'm good here. <laughs> how are you doing? Well, let's set it up here. Reedsville ball. Spot throw in from the sideline. You're down by one. Really at this stage, if you're Jason Ross, you're drawing up your most effective sideline out of bounds play to score. I mean, it, the season comes down to this. Season's on the line. Everybody's tired right now, but they've got to lock in to this message. Coach Ross, the biggest thing is getting this ball in. You know there's going to be pressure. You have to expect the Jags to sell out. That's what they've been doing the whole second half, turning to the trap. But I think the mismatch out on the floor is Harrison. Somehow, some way, he's got to get the ball here and let him go to work. The Farmville Central basketball dynasty has been breathed new life for the last 15 minutes. They now have a one point lead with 29 seconds left in overtime, trying to win a state title for the fifth time in six years. Rams basketball down by one. Where will they go? Neal against Rhodes. Driving in, lost control, puts it with the left hand and scores! A tough finish by Yante Neal. Farmville Central down one, timeout, Larry Williford, and that is the last timeout for the Jags. All right. It's going to be a full timeout. Break down the play from Neal. Uh, unbelievable work here by Neal. Just knifing through, the double team comes over, another defender three on one. It doesn't matter. The star sophomore with the ball in his hands, the trust from Jason Ross to give him the opportunity. He comes through, such a talent. I mean, not just the ball in his hands. I mean, the ball went from his left to his right, to his left to his right, twice. Oh, that attack. And he's going through players as he's doing it. Full speed. <laughs> his handles. And, and, of course, supremely talented, but that's work ethic. That's practice to be that good and be able to maneuver at that speed. All right, so both teams are now out of timeouts. Both teams are in the in the bonus. The clock shows 13.6. And Farmville Central will have to go the length of the floor. Now, offensively, what are you drawing up here? Because you have a little bit of space to work with for Farmville Central. And then, most importantly, who are you going to first? Well, plenty of time here. I'm giving the ball to MJ Williams. Your best scorer. Let him create another situation. Pick and roll. If I'm the Jags, I'm shooting this with about four or five seconds left and telling Moye and Evans yeah. sell out on the glass for the offensive board. All right, Tyler Whitehurst, meanwhile, is in the corner, rubbing his hands together, blowing into his palm. He's trying to get ready. He might be the hero. It's in the hands of MJ Williams, and here we go. Ten seconds away from the 2A state title. Who will it be? Farmville Central down one. MJ Williams spins in the lane, kicks outside, extra pass on the way for the win. Short tip, no! And Reedsville dethrones Farmville Central in overtime. on Chris Rhodes' fingertips. The extra pass from Evans. Rhodes was open, just left it short. And the Reedville Rams, football state champs, after finishing a runner-up last year, and now basketball state champs after finishing a runner-up last year. And let's get to our West Shore home player of the game. 
And from Reedsville, Johnny is Sharp, Jay. But he was amazing. So many candidates for this award, but Sharp, his production was huge. Shooting the ball from the outside, critical moments. He stepped up for his team. West Shore home, fast remodeling, made easy. What an absolute barn burner. And a privilege to be a part of it. Look at the respect shown by these players from opposite ends of the state, slugging it out for a state title for the second year in a row after a matinee after the Christmas holiday, which saw Reedsville beat Farmville Central by 10. And they meet for the whole barrel of monkeys and ball of wax here in the 2A state title game. And Reedsville comes through. What an absolute privilege to watch this one. And let's get to the play of the game presented by the 988 Suicide Crisis Prevention Hotline. Call, text, or chat 988-247. Let's get through it together. One of the more remarkable plays we saw in a remarkable game. That behind the back delivery from Neal to Harrison. How did he thread that one in? I mean, absolute stunning action from all of these incredible athletes. Harrison battling through cramps in the final couple of minutes. Tyler Whiter is coming off of the bench to nail a couple of critical threes for Farmville Central. And in the end, it was the finish by Deontay Neal to give the Rams a one-point lead, and the defense takes it to the end. Let's go to Jay, who is with the head coach of the Rams, Jason Ross. My first words to you, what an amazing game. You must be so proud. It's unbelievable. I, I really don't know what to say. God is good. I love my guys. It was a great game. Five years since was tough. But the Reeves were Rams. They pulled through tonight. And this rivalry between you and Farmville Central, it's something different. It's special. I know there's so much respect for those players and the coaching staff. It is. Farmville Central, as I said earlier in the week, they're the gold standard. To be the best, you got to beat the best. And Reeves will beat the best tonight. They, they fought to the end, but my guys pulled it out. I'm just so blessed to be the coach of the Reasonable Rams. What were your messages to your team during all of those timeouts, during the overtime period, when your players had to step up and they came through? What were you telling your team? Just keep your composure. Believe in, believe in our core principles, which is defense. They, they did that. That last stop, it was amazing. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm just, I, I, I just can't describe it. I know this means so much to you, to the players, and the whole community. How special is this to do it with this group, fighting through all the adversity of playing this game last year and getting to the point this year and now winning this game? I mean, it's amazing. When we walked off the floor last year losing to Farmer Central, from top to bottom, we were defeated. But my guys got back in the gym, put the work in, and look at God, championship. Congratulations, Coach. You're a state champion. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll see you next year. See you next, see you next year. <laughs> and that is the first state title for the Rams in 21 years. And how much sweat was on that shirt for Jason Ross as he coaches his absolute uh, life away tonight in this Reedsville overtime win over Farmville Central. It's a classic, and it's over, and it's a state title for Deontay Neal and the Reedsville Rams. Trophy presentation for Winston-Salem on the way. Well, the classic is over for the 2A state title. Reedsville in overtime. A one-point win over Farmville Central, 78-77. Here are the final stats presented by the law offices of Roderick Todd McIver, CYA. Call your attorney, Jay. Uh, first of all, <laughs> These stats, both sides made so many plays. You can't measure the heart they showed. I'm just so proud of these players and the coaches for what they put on tonight on display for us. And the points, the paint final totals, Reedsville plus four, 36 to 32. A lot of times, Jay, these games, the buildup just don't live up to it, right? Something happens. It doesn't play out like that. Maybe it's a 10, 15 yeah. point game one way or the other with very little drama. 
not the case. This not only reached, but far exceeded, I think, anybody's hopes walking into this building today in the rematch. Better than we could have ever expected. And what this does for the whole state to have this on display, I mean, just shows the passion of the fan bases and the highly skilled players and the coaches in this game. And you know, very lucky to be a part of it with you and see this, uh, this great game. I thought you were going to ask Coach Ross about how much uh, sweat he went through that shirt coaching. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. I had to, I had to let him go be part of the uh, trophy's celebration, but it means so much. Yeah. And not just a state title for the Rams, an undefeated season for Reno, 29-0. Yeah. And again, that included a very tough schedule, including the game against Farmville Central a couple of months ago. And I like what you said earlier about you know, sometimes when you see brackets of tournaments come out, you're almost hoping in the back of your mind that yeah. maybe the top seed will stumble and create an easier path in the championship. I guarantee neither one of these teams, players or coaches, was hoping that the other would lose no. before they got here because they wanted to battle again. They wanted this. They wanted to test each other against the best. What a treat. What a treat. Farmville Central to the state title game for the sixth year in a row. Knocked off the perch, and they finish 30 and two, and Jason Ross soaking up every moment. As we will now join the public dress announcer for the rest of the trophy ceremony and the banner for the 2024 state championship to Reedsville. To receive a men's championship line. Trophy belongs to the Reedville Rams. Reedsville 78-77 overtime win over Farmville Central. One program and note, one last state championship is on the way. The 4A title game between New Hanover and North Mecklenburg tip off because of this OT game. Tip off of that one will be 745. We'll come on the air at 740. So once again, your final in OT. Reedsville 78, Farmville Central 77. I'd always like to take a moment to thank our great sponsors that bring you these games. They are West Shore Home, Popeyes, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, Riddle and Brantley, McBrown Home Furnishings, the law offices of Roderick Todd McIver, Piedmont Federal Bank, CR Legal, the Carolina Hurricanes, and Ingalls Markets. So on behalf of Jason Halter and our entire crew, Patrick Keyes, thank you for watching. An absolute pleasure to be part of this one. Reedsville in overtime knocks off the defending champ Farmville Central in a rematch from last year. 78-77 and the championship coming back to Reedsville. Thanks for watching. So long from Winston-Salem.